Today, I'm going to be talking about what is said to be the most beautiful idea in physics, Noether's Theorem. Noether's Theorem states that for every continuous symmetry in a physical system, a conserved quantity for that symmetry exists. A symmetry in a physical system is slightly different than a symmetry in, say, a drawing or an insect. Symmetry in the context of Noether's Theorem means a transformation to the system has caused no change in the equations of motion. Noether's theorem easily expresses itself at both the subatomic level with quantum theory and the classical scale, such as theory of relativity. So you may have heard of people saying conservation of energy, conservation of mass, but why do these things actually get conserved? Why is it that we have this strange law that seems to govern everything and never be broken, and where does it even come from? Well, symmetry and conserved quantities come in pairs. If you have a conserved quantity, you have a symmetry behind it providing you with this conserved quantity. And if you have a symmetry, you know that a conserved quantity exists as its partner. There are three main types of symmetry conservation pairs in Noether's theorem, which are spatial translation symmetry leading to the conservation of linear momentum, rotational symmetry leading to the conservation of angular momentum, and time translation symmetry leading to the conservation of energy. So what is symmetry? Symmetry in physics is referring to properties of the system that remain unchanged under certain transformations. Let's start with translational symmetry. Translational symmetry refers to the property which when we shift an object's position in space, the laws of physics remain unchanged. As a result of the symmetry, linear momentum is conserved. Linear momentum is calculated by multiplying the object's mass by its velocity. The conservation of momentum principle expresses how when there are no external forces acting on a system, the total momentum of the system remains constant. Next, we will look at how rotational symmetry leads to the conservation of angular momentum. Rotational symmetry refers to the fact when we rotate an object around on its axis, the laws of physics remain unchanged. So we know the laws of physics remain unchanged regardless of an object's orientation in space is the symmetry, and now we will understand the conserved quantity. Angular momentum is a measurement of the rotational motion an object has. When there are no external torques acting on the object, a torque being a force that can influence or change an object's rotational motion, it's simply a rotational force, the total angular momentum of the system remains constant when there are no torques acting on the object. Rotational symmetry and the conservation of angular momentum governs and describes the behavior of celestial bodies such as planets. Planets have rotational symmetry as they are isolated systems in space with no external torques acting upon them. As planets rotate around their own axes, their physical properties, the laws of physics that govern them, are invariant, unchanged under these rotations. The conservation of angular momentum ensures that the system that rotates such as galaxies, stars, and planets maintain their rotational motion over time. Angular momentum conservation also governs the motion of objects that orbit around a central mass, like our planets orbit around a central mass, the sun, and this ensures these orbits remain predictable and regular over time. Finally, we will discuss how time symmetry leads to the conservation of energy. Time symmetry states that when we apply shifts or changes in time, the laws of physics remain unchanged. This means that the behavior of physical systems should be the same at different moments in time, and that the laws of physics do not depend on the specific moment in time that they were applied. This time symmetry leads us to the conservation of energy. The conservation of energy states that the total amount of energy in an isolated system remains constant over time. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred into different forms. Since the laws of physics remain the same over time, the behavior of a physical system should always be the same regardless of what time an observation is made to the system. This implies that energy remains conserved and constant throughout a system's evolution or as time passes, and it should not depend on the specific moment in time that these measurements were made. A practical application of the energy conservation law is creating energy efficient automobiles. The principle states that energy is a conserved quantity, so any energy in must equal the total energy out. Engineers can understand this principle and use it to design automobiles that maximize fuel efficiency and minimize wasted energy. Now we know that Noether's theorem describes the relationship between symmetries of the universe and conserved quantities. 
The law is that for every continuous symmetry in a physical system, there exists a corresponding conserved quantity. As I mentioned, Noether's theorem is so profound and can be applied to both Einstein's theory of general relativity and quantum theory. Noether's theorem has implications in Einstein's theory that are fundamental to understanding gravitational phenomena such as black holes. Noether's theorem also has important implications in quantum field theory and gives rise to quantum conserved quantities such as electric charge. Emmy Noether was a female mathematician and one of the most influential mathematicians of the 20th century. Discovering her theorem was groundbreaking for both the math and physics community. All right, that's my explanation of Noether's theorem. I hope that was helpful and I will see you guys next time.